Mac. Hollow points. Oh yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Hickok 45 here with finally a Makarov. Okay, it is from Mother Russia, from the Soviet Union. Soviet made uh, Makarov, uh, vintage 1976. Uh, picked it up when I was over there several years back and a little trouble getting on a flight, but I managed to get back. Just so you all could see it. Pretty cool, huh? And you didn't believe that story, did you? No, uh, this was a loner. Uh, viewer lent this to us. Been wanting to get my hands on a, a Makarov uh, for a long time and try one out. I know they're very popular. Very popular carry guns now. That's what's pretty interesting, isn't it? Uh, the, a gun, a uh, Cold War pistol like this is so popular in the, uh, the carry market, in, in this country at least. I doubt that it's a big carry gun for civilians in uh, you know, the part of the country where it was made. Could be wrong, but uh, Pretty interesting gun. Take a look at it here. It uh, looks a lot like uh, good old Carl Walt Walther's uh, creation, doesn't it? There's uh, some similarities there. Yeah, very, uh, very uh, similar firearm. So uh, he did. Uh, Nikolai Makarov did borrow some uh, of the design features, I think, and uh, internally, externally, it's a little bit like a. Uh, PPK, that's there on steroids, I guess, more like a, a PP, Walter PP, I guess. But uh, interesting gun, fires a, a different cartridge, 9 by 18 we'll talk about. And uh, has an interesting magazine, we'll find all of those. There we go. So now this one, as you see, the the Soviet uh, signal there, Ish, Ishvek, however you say that, where it was made. And it also uh, has the import markings. You know, from uh, I guess it's the Pacific West uh, Arms, I believe it is, yeah, or Pac West Arms, uh, out of Redwood, uh, Washington, and I don't know if they're in business now or not, but uh, and it was imported from Bulgaria. Now my research tells me, you may know differently or better, but uh, I read in several places that that some of these uh, these that were made in the Soviet Union were. They, they ended up in Bulgaria, and then a lot of the Bulgarian Makarovs that were imported to this country uh, had a few of these mixed in with them. They call them the Bulgarian sneaks or something like that, and and so they came in kind of the same route, even though they were made, uh, Soviet made. So, and this is the military model. It has the non-adjustable sights. So this is a pretty cool gun. Uh, there are a lot of these around uh, in terms of the, the Makarov, and there are so many uh, variations of it. Uh, commercial and military from various countries, you know, Germany uh, after unification, uh, East Germany uh, prior to that, where else were they made? China, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Soviet Union, and there's there's different models of them, different calibers, but now the 9 by 18 by 18, the, uh, the here it is, I'll show you the round that it, it shoots, is the classic Makarov round, 9 millimeter Makarov. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that. These got some tool ammo, uh, got some uh, silver bear, some hollow points, and some of those I shot were hollow points. Uh, this was a box that the viewer gave me uh, with it, uh, and they were uh, they're hollow points. Of course, I fired a, a magazine, and I, I had fired uh, about half of that box before the video with the hollow points, 95 grain, and uh, no problems. You know, it seems to feed hollow points just fine. And uh, if you notice though, they have a, quite an open mouth there. So I was, you know, I, I'm a little wary of uh, firing hollow points and old guns, old designs, because quite often they just weren't really uh, designed for it. But that's got a pretty, pretty open mouth there, doesn't it? Uh, and uh, like I said, we fired over half of that box with no, no trouble at all. And I noticed that a lot of the ammo you buy, like this uh, silver bear I picked up this morning in Clarksville, all of these are hollow points. So. Uh, it must generally they must feed them pretty well, so that's good news because a lot of people are carrying these, and they I know a lot of them are not all that expensive. I think the uh, the Soviet military versions like this can be kind of pricey, but they're generally not uh, not extremely costly, and they're just a good feeling gun. Uh, when I picked this up, and I had never really even handled one, I have to say until yesterday, 
<laughs> I really had not. And uh, I thought, oh, feels good. Reminded me of the little bursts I have in 380. Uh, reminds me of the Walther. And it just feels good. And I see why they're so attractive. Uh, just, just, just fits the hand kind of like a glove. Even that, uh, that old Cold War uh, Soviet grip there. You know, bake light. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, doesn't feel all that bad, to tell you the truth. Now, to, to again demonstrate the similarities there, let me, uh, let me take the old Walther apart here. Remember how to do it. Remember you pull down on the trigger guard and you pull back the slide and lift up and you know you got a fixed fixed barrel you know it springs right around the barrel so we'll see what this one looks like so we got the heel type mag release on the, on the micro and we're clear and we'll see yeah we're on fire so pull down the trigger guard and move it over and lack and you know hook it there a little bit Pull back and up now. Oh, look at that. I'll be darned. Huh. So you have the fixed barrel, which is an, an actual, a very accurate design, uh, you know, inherently because it, it's, it's fixed. The barrel doesn't move, doesn't drop, lock in, lock out, and drop and all that. Uh, it's just, it should be extremely accurate. Uh, I mean, inherently accurate. You know, pistols only as accurate as the person shooting it, of course. But uh, it, it should have a lot of inherent accuracy. And it's it's a solid, it's a blowback. It's you know there's, there's nothing locks up. It's strictly the weight of the slide, you know, uh, the spring, and it, it's a blowback operation. So it's just the cartridge uh, blowing back the slide to uh, feed, pick up another one. So it's it's a simple design, and isn't that just like the Soviets? A simple design, uh, like this baby here. That's another rifle that was designed over there. That's probably going to do pretty well. I have a feeling it's going to be successful. And uh, this thing is pretty successful because it, uh, I think, well, see, it goes back to 1951. So I think from 1951 to uh, 1991 is the official handgun, military handgun. And it's still used uh, in a lot of units, both military and police, from what I understand. So back on, there you go. So these things are still in use. They're, and, uh, you know, 1951 goes back a pretty good way. So that's, that's pretty impressive, you know, for the old Cold War pistol. Uh, interesting uh, firearm. I've seen them, just never had even held one, never fired it. Let's load up the mag here, take a couple more shots with it. Now, I fired some hollow points, and I fired uh, some just full metal jacket. Let's fire a different, well, let's, let me show you the round here, too, while we're just messing around. One thing I wanted to show you uh, is that the 9 millimeter there on the left, you see the difference in the length, uh, which is 9 by 19, and then the uh, the uh, 9 by 18, the Makarov round, is in the center, and then we have a 380, which is essentially a 9 by 17. Okay, now I'm not sure the length tells you everything, but that tells you a little bit. Let me take it out of that and set them here. Uh, it also depends on what bullet you have in you know in the case, of course. So the the Mac round's kind of in the middle, you know. It's uh, but now. A big difference is in the diameter. It is uh, 9.22, I think, millimeter actually, and it is uh, three what three three six four, whereas the nine millimeter and the 380 are 356 generally. Okay, it's 356 thousandths. So you're going up, you're jumping up to 364 thousandths. And to show you that, I have this Glock barrel out here, you know, which is a nine millimeter. It's a Glock 26. You drop the 9 millimeter round in, of course. It goes right in there like it should. You drop in the uh, the Makarov round 9x18, and you see where it stops. And a Glock chamber is famous for being a little oversized. See, so that's what you got. See, it, it doesn't even come close to chambering. So you, you, could, you could put them in a magazine, a Glock magazine, or any kind of 9 millimeter magazine, but they're not going to chamber. See, they wouldn't go in there. So so it's a bigger, it's a, it's a wider round. Okay, be aware of that. All right, I wanted to show you that, 9 by 18. So it's not just shorter than a 9 millimeter. It's fatter, bigger in diameter. Let's load a couple of mags and shoot some more. Let's use something different. You know, I haven't even shot this silver bear, so let's try that ammo. There's a lot of ammo out there. That's the cool thing about it, too. Uh, I guess there's a fair amount of surplus ammo. I don't know. I've not really shot for, uh, for, for ammo for one of these before, but... Uh, I am not interested in a firearm if I have trouble finding ammo. 
you know, if you have a lot of trouble finding ammo, or it's extremely expensive when you do, it, it uh, limits, of course, the uh, the attraction of the firearm. It uh, just really does. Okay, this is nice looking stuff. Let's shoot some of this. This is hollow point again, silver bear hollow point. It was all hollow point, so I didn't have a choice. So this thing seems to feed hollow points okay. So we'll just uh, try that out. Like I say, this thing is in a, available in a lot of different configurations. Many of you have them. Uh, and uh, just from my reading, there's so many, it makes your head spin. Uh, different uh, variations. There's some with higher capacity, newer ones. This depends on when they were made. This one, is a, as you saw there, is uh, 1976. And uh, it is what it is. It holds eight rounds. The magazines hold eight rounds. And... I think the gun is about 24 ounces, something like that, around a pound and a half, I think. So you do have a little weight. It's not like some of the polymer wonders that we, we all enjoy today. There is a little weight to it, but, uh, but a lot of these are just not that expensive, and they have a reputation for being reliable. And, of course, you can make fun of the cartridge if you want to. If you hate a 9mm, you're probably not going to love this. But, uh, you know, again, it, it, you know, probably get the job done. All right, got to get used to that uh, heel type uh, mag release. I don't particularly like those. Most of us don't if we've gotten used to the, the thumb releases. But uh, very interesting uh, piece of history, no doubt about it. Let's take a couple more shots with this thing. All right, we're shooting hollow points. So let's see what they'll do. Nice. Ah, there's a two liter of mist. <laughs> oh, some flower pots. Let's see if we can pick off the top one. All right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Trigger's not too bad, I tell you. It's not too bad. You know what? We have to try. I know that uh, Nikolai Makarov. Did not have 80 yard gongs in mind when he designed this, but he didn't know me. All right. Can't quit on this, can I? Yeah, there we go. Last round, the magazine popped in. It seems pretty accurate. It really does. Uh, I, you know, you have your limitations. Now, one thing I didn't point out was the. It is a double single action. You know, you uh, it has a decocker actually. So that decocks it. Pretty cool. And when it is on safe, uh, the slide will not move, the, the trigger is locked up. Push that down into fire, you see the red dot there. And then uh, you can cock it, now single action. Okay, but now it's back to double action. So I can carry it double action. Uh, if I were going to carry this, I would probably carry it in fire position and just rely on the long trigger pull, you know, you know like that. But uh, you know, it's uh, not a not a bad design for for carry. It does have a firing pin, as I understand. This. I haven't had that uh, apart, the slide apart. It's a free floating firing pin, I believe they call it. There's no spring or anything, and you know that is considered by some to be a little iffy, a little dangerous, perhaps. But it's it survived a lot of drop tests from my reading, and even in California, I think this is legal uh, because of the well, they they drop it like 200 times, put a round in the chamber or a prime case in the chamber whatever they do and keep dropping and keep dropping and could not get them to fire so so apparently despite the fact it does not have this firing pin spring it's uh, relatively safe uh, let's take a couple more shots here it really feels good good feeling little pistol yeah. uh, recoil is moderate uh, 
The trigger is not bad. Uh, I don't know what the pounds would be on the double action pull. Not bad at all on this model. And then the single action is pretty nice. Uh, no, no major complaints at all. Uh, it, it feels pretty good. Like I say, this is considered a uh, Bulgarian sneak. It, it got into this country and, uh, you know, through Bulgaria, you know, via the, the import there. But it's, uh, you know, Soviet gun, uh, a military version, you know, because of the, uh, the standard fixed sights. And it, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, and it, it shoots well. You take that screw out back there to get the grip off. I haven't done that yet. I don't, I don't need to, really. Again, a viewer uh, lent us this, and uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, it's another firearm that I might not have had for a while, just wouldn't have gotten around to for a while. And again, to break it down, you know, you just pull the trigger guard down, just like the Walther, and it uh, comes right off. So it's pretty easy to, to clean and uh, just an interesting design. These old guns are just a piece of history. We've got to shoot a couple more times. Uh, that, you know, they're, if you like firearms and you have any interest at all in history, I'm gonna dump these out and bring my bowl out here today, didn't I? That's why we have the bowl, if you ever wondered. It's a lot easier to load from a bowl. <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you do enjoy history and you enjoy firearms, you can't help it but uh, be fascinated by guns uh, such as this, even if it's not a gun you would carry, not a gun you would say, oh wow, you put the Glock away and get one of those. Uh, but uh, it does fall into that category of firearms that are uh, really not all that expensive, depending on the model, and uh, depending on how collectible uh, the one is that you end up with. And uh, they range in all sorts of prices. I think, yeah, I don't know, prices change on these things, you know, regularly, but uh, m maybe from 200 to five, six, seven, or eight, you know, if it's a really collectible version. And I think this one is fairly collectible, so it would be at the higher end price-wise. But the sights actually are pretty good. I, looking at the gong or looking at targets over there, I like the sight picture on it. I don't have any hot night sights or anything there, but uh, it's, it's not that bad, not that bad at all. Uh, so, like I say, you got a decocker, so, you know, for 1951, you know, that's not a bad design. You don't have a firing pin block and that sort of thing, but you do have a decocker, so, you know, you can, you can carry it like that, and uh, you're really going to save, like, a situation, I guess. You'd have to, you know, push that down before you could even fire it double action if you wanted to carry it that way. So, just a couple of shots here. All right. And I didn't show you the... Uh, this is this is a holster. This is the original holster, of course. These uh, is what they came in. I don't like them at all. <laughs> they are they are ugly and impractical. But that's the military, you know, style holster and everything. This was designed. This goes back there, loops around the gun, to sort of pull that out to get the gun out. But it doesn't work all that well. The whole thing is kind of stiff. Is part of the problem. If it were really loosened up and been used a lot, maybe it would be easier to to use. And I, I didn't show you this either. Your extra magazine, of course, goes right in here. You know, you got, the, you got your cleaning rod there, so you got everything right there in the holster. Pretty cool, including the gun that you might be able to get out in a hurry, who knows. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> you might want a, a Walther as backup. Alright, we're firing Harla points again. Safety off. You cannot rack the slide with the safety on, okay? But once you do, and once it's hot, you can drop the hammer like that if you want to with the hammer drop, okay? Let's see if I can hit one of those tree limbs. Double action. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't exactly knock them around, but it uh, it feels good. You can kind of hit what you aim at. It's right in the middle. Yeah. Good feeling little gun. Let me take just a couple of shots at uh, those pigs over there on the top row, just, just for the heck of it. I'm not sure exactly where to hold, but I think I got an idea. Well, I guess right there. 
I guess right there. Okay, I'll quit while I'm ahead. Get these plates here close. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Let's shoot it fast if we can. Do I have another magazine? Yes, I do. All right. I'm going to drop the hammer. Okay, now here's the way I would carry it. All right. There's a bad guy right there. Malfunction finally, didn't we? Oop, the magazine wasn't seated. That's my fault. I think one went in, yeah. Didn't have the magazine seated apparently. Let's try that again. Okay, so we're ready to go double action. <sighs> Yeah, I gotta watch that with that heel. I'm not used to that, and uh, uh, you gotta push it up pretty tight. Uh, but that that was loose, so that that was the problem. So I'm impressed that that thing will feed hollow points like that. Uh, most of the rounds, I guess, that I fired so far have been been hollow points. Uh, so uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Oh man, another gun that I have developed a fondness for that I didn't know about. Uh, uh, this project is getting so expensive. Uh, I'm probably going to want one of these things. I don't. I don't really need one, but I do like it. I really do. It's uh, uh, quite an interesting piece of history if you think about it, from '51 to to '91. And again, they're still these things are still being used, you know, by the military and, and police over there, and uh, and around the world, in various places because they they work, you know. And there's so many of them, kind of like the AK. There's so many made, and they work. Uh, it's hard to just uh, you know, do away with them, you know. Uh, and again, because of my age, that's, you know, this this gun, uh, I grew up with this gun, you know, so to speak, I, even though I was not that familiar with it. Uh, you know, that Cold War era uh, that I grew up through, you know, I, you can't help but have a fascination for the, uh, the military weapons of that period, just I guess it's something about that, you know, if you grew up with them, but, uh, or if you just study history. Uh, it's an interesting uh, period in history, and uh, you know the, the Russians, the Soviets, are famous for being uh, excellent arms maker. Let's face it, you know some of the, the most iconic firearms, including this, the AK, come out of there, the Tokarov, you know, uh, and there are others. So, the nine by eighteen, interesting cartridge. It is available. Like I say, it's it's not quite a nine millimeter. It's a little more. It's somewhere between the 380 and the nine millimeter. And uh, it, it is it's not just a shorter nine millimeter. You know, it is bigger. It, it will not work in a nine millimeter barrel or a 380 barrel chamber. You know, it's 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 for this the Makarov. Okay, so pretty cool. Glad to be able to bring this to you, and I'm glad to be able to to try it. Life is good.